Um, okay, so welcome to our team call tonight. It is June 3rd, um, and I was talking with Ashley yesterday, and, and I think a lot of us feel um, very disheartened about what's going on in the world right now and feel that it's very important to have honest, real, hard conversations about this right now. So uh, when I was talking to Ashley about it yesterday, she suggested um, reaching out to Jessica um, to have her come and share with our team tonight. So thank you so much, Jessica, for coming on to share with us. Um, and thank you everyone for showing up tonight to be um, open ears and open hearts for what we're going to hear. Um, and Ashley, if you wanna go ahead and intro Jess, that would be awesome. Sure, so like Dana said, thank you guys so much for coming on tonight. Um, as you probably guess, I know a lot of us have been struggling with how to share on social media, how to use our platforms to really make a difference and um, you know, any little things that we can do to help um, assistance with you know, trying to explain this to our kids if you have kids or just even getting a better understanding of it yourself um, because we're all so different and come from such different backgrounds. I thought this was just a great way to bring us all together as a team, as individuals, um, to come together to try and make a change. So Jess and I actually met um, at my other job, Cycle Bar in Robinson. Uh, she kind of took me under her wing when I first started and showed me the ropes and we just hit it off and became friends and her and her husband have an amazing company. Um, and she'll explain a little bit more about that. <laughs> There's a whole lot of detail, but Jess, intro yourself, girl. You got all the floor here. <laughs> uh, thanks. So I'll let you guys know, um, since Ashley, you said you were going on Instagram live, I just went ahead and put it on my Facebook live. So, you know, we're getting all the people in. Um, so like Ashley said, um, she reached out to me yesterday and was like, hey, we just want to kind of have a conversation about what's going on um, and what we can do as coaches, right? Um, because I think that one of the things that is, um, is unique about Beachbody coaches is that we always want to help people, right? Like the reason that we're in the we're doing the work that we're doing is because we want to help people. Um, and so I was like, absolutely, Ashley, I got you, girl. <laughs> so I came up with a short PowerPoint. Um, and so what I want you all to kind of understand is, one, I'm really taking into consideration the social context of what's going on, right? Like, we understand that there are people that are hurting very, very bad in our society. Um, and if you're not hurting, there are some people who are just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Like, where do I start? Um, and so I wanted to just quickly go through a few things um, to help everyone get started. So um, for those of you that are on Facebook Live, I'm going to just talk you through all the points. For those of you that are on Zoom, I am actually going to share my screen with you. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, can everybody see my screen? All right, so it says, um, let's, it's, it's all about creating an inclusive environment, right, in your business. And so my name's Jessica Spradley. Um, in a few weeks, praise the Lord, I will be done with my PhD, so I just need to defend. Um, so that's why it says ABD there, all but dissertation. Hey, everyone, I'm live. Um, I'm an assistant professor of sociology, and my research specialty is in race and ethnicity. Um, I'm a lead consultant for Care Based Leadership, LLC. Um, and what Care Based Leadership does is we um, genuinely take the opportunity to provide professional development for people to understand how how to care for people and not just care about them. So the difference between caring for is caring about is if I care about you and you're sick, I'm going to call and check in on you, right? I'm going to say, how you doing? What's going on? Let you know that I care about you. If I care for you, then I'm jumping in this with you. So you're sick. You know what? I'm going to get some chicken noodle soup from Panera and I'm coming to your house. I might sit on your couch um, and just sit with you, like be in that moment with you. Um, and that's going to be really important when we get to some of the other things. 
Um, I've been coaching in Beachbody since 2010. Um, like a lot of coaches, my, um, my journey has been like a roller coaster up, down, winding around. Um, but I have made some amazing, long lasting relationships um, with not just the people that, um, that are coaches, but some of the people that have, people that have been in my challenge groups. Um, the people that I work out with are my best friends. Like <laughs> it's when people say you have a fit fam, like it's, it's real, it's legit in our house. So <laughs> Um, I have two kids. I have a seven-year-old daughter um, and I have a four-year-old daughter. So we're going to talk a little bit about kiddos too, but I'm going to try to keep it like as condensed as I can to get you all the good stuff. Okay. So let's, ju let's jump right in. Um, so when we really think about the heart of the matter, there's a social context in our world that's going on right now, right? Like we, the whole world had the opportunity to watch um, the murder of a man in the street. 10 minutes, we literally watched a murder. It wasn't a TV show. It wasn't like, um, a, what is it? LARPing live action replay. Like it was a legit dying of a person. And that was kind of the culmination of, a kind of a, a boiling pot that's been going on for a long time in the United States, right? And so what's happening now is not just an outpouring of frustration for that one incident, it's an outpouring of grief um, for communities that feel like they have been oppressed and I'm part of that community, which they have been oppressed um, systematically for hundreds of years in the United States, right? And so it's not just our local context now. We've gone, it's regional, it's national. There are protests in almost every state in the United States and it's gone abroad. There are protests in Berlin, there's protests um, in the streets of Africa, there's everywhere. Um, there's all kinds of protests. The UN has just, um, put out a, um, a statement on what's happening in the United States. And um, it's really taken um, this, this kind of, um, this global, people are really looking at the United States and what's going on here, right? Um, normally the United States is kind of the trendsetter. And so this is a bit of a different position that we're in now, right? And so one of the things that people have been asking because everybody is home, most of us because of coronavirus, right? We have all this time to think about things. What do I do? Like, what do I do? Um, and one of the things that um, Ashley shared with me when she asked me to do um, this quick training is a lot of people are afraid, afraid to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing or where do I go from here? And so I wanted to um, just talk about five different things that you can do um, that will allow you to participate in the world around you where you are needed, right? One of the things that people get confused about when they think about um, civil rights movements is that if you're not out protesting, then you're not, you're not participating. Or if you're not saying a hundred different things on social media, then you're not participating. And that's not true. A movement has multiple parts, right? And you have to just find your part, right? So I'm gonna give you a couple of things that you can do to kind of explore, and then we'll go into some Q&A really quick. Um, and so in the personal context, I want you all to take a deep breath and just embrace that, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna have to do something afraid. We've all paste, posted like a crazy post or sent a message to somebody and then you just click and then you go to bed. <laughs> You're like, oh, I hope that that's okay in the morning, right? Like this is, this is the same thing, but with a thousand times more purpose behind it, right? So um, the first, the five action items I want to talk about is checking in, consistent, consistency, educating yourself, donating, and acting, okay? So the first one, checking in. Talk to the people that you care about, 
right? This is not just a global, well, there's a global pandemic called coronavirus, but there's also a global pandemic of racism that's ex exploding around the world, right? We need to be talking about that. Thanks, Sarah. We need to be talking about that the same way that we're talking about coronavirus, right? It's not a taboo discussion. We have to have these conversations because when you have those conversations, you are able to get comfortable with exploring what's going on in the world and what's going on in your heart. Talk to your challengers, reach out to people who are on your team. You don't have to say, hey, there's racism going on in the world. What do you do? Like, reach out to them and say, hey, just wanted to check in on you. Don't know how things are going. Um, I'm just surviving here. Just wanted to reach out period. Let people know that you care, right? Um, ask your friends how they're doing. You know the friends, like if you're anything like me, I know my friends. Like I know who's going to give me what answer when I have whatever problem. Um, call your friends that you can be honest and authentic with right? Those are the people who are going to allow you to be open and to be brave and to be able to say things, even if it's the wrong thing and be like, hey, you know, people, some of my friends will be like, Jess, probably shouldn't say that to anybody else but me. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, so make sure that you have, you talk to your friends because we, we're, we're processors, right? Sometimes you need to talk about things to get through it and not just the feelings behind it, but actually your feelings toward it. Um, and a lot of us are moms. Hey moms, um, shameless plug. I'm going to be doing a webinar on Friday for moms who want to really get into talking about, um, this with their kiddos. So make sure you, um, send Ashley a message or find me on Facebook and um, I'll get you connected with that Zoom link. But talk to your kiddos like they're real people because they are, they're tiny humans, right? And so if there are things that are going on in this world, it is okay for you to talk to your kids about it. It's okay for you to tell your kid that sometimes people in this world hurt other people because of the color of their skin. That doesn't mean that you will do that. That doesn't mean that your friends are gonna get hurt. It does mean that it's what happens in the world that we live in now. And when I talk to my kids about it, I say, I, we talk about specific instances. And then I say, well, here's what mommy's doing about it. Here's what we're gonna do about it. Here's how we're gonna learn about it, right? So the thing that you have to do when you're talking to kiddos is, you really have to be intentional about closing the loop for them. And if you wanna know more about that, again, tune into my webinar, shoot me a message and I will get you the Zoom link for Friday. Um, consistency, 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 consistency. What are you posting? What were you posting? Who's your audience? What do you care about? right? Your social media platforms were consistent prior to this happening, right? Prior to coronavirus, prior to um, protests in the streets, what were you posting about? If there were injustices that you were posting about before and you were so quick to um, acknowledge that something happened in the LGBT community or um, a different community, then you should, if you care about this, then this should be the same process. It's not any different. A lot of times people are like, I don't want to say something that, um, that will come across as mean or rude, or um, I don't want people to think that I'm tone deaf. I don't want people to think that I, I had somebody tell me, I don't want people to think that I hate all white people. And here's the thing, don't say that you hate all white people and people won't think that you hate all white people, right? Be authentic in what you're saying and people will feel your heart. That's what you want people to feel. And honestly, I've, I know people who have said something and then I private message them or I send them a text and say, hey, um, let's talk about the Facebook post that you did. I, it could come across this way. So I just want you to be prepared if people are gonna, you know, how some people might react to it. 
and sometimes people text me and say, hey, Jess, I, I didn't mean to post this. How do, I, how do I respond to this or how do I respond to that? And that goes back to reaching out and talking to people that you care about, right? This has to be a conversation. And if you make a mistake, it's okay. It's okay. Like, it's okay to make a mistake when your heart is genuine and you go back and correct it, right? With a Facebook post. Messing up on a Facebook post is not the same as committing a racist act towards somebody. We have to be very, very clear about that, right? Like, when we're talking about racist acts, and I'm, I'm talking about um, things that prevent other people from having, having um, access to life, liberty, or the pursuit of happiness, right? Like, when you do actions, that's, that's not a mistake right? If you mince words on Facebook and you accidentally say something or you're really trying to be inclusive, but you mess up, people mess up all the time. And sometimes it's more important for you to try than it is for you to say nothing. So be authentic. If you've been authentic all the way up to this point, people will give you the benefit of the doubt because they understand who you are. They know who you are. Some people, let's be honest, some people will be trolls and they'll say something mean. And that's why sometimes I just post on my page and then I don't even look at the comments because I don't care. It is what it is. I said what I said and then I'm done. And sometimes that's just how you have to take it. Um, educate yourself. So this is a very, very important one, and I'll just be um, short, sweet, and to the point. This is not the time to ask your friends of color to help you understand things. This is not the time to ask people who are hurting to do additional work um, that you can do yourself. And that's why I'm gonna tell you a few things that you can do, right? Because, and the reason that I say that is because too often, um, especially in the United States, people of color are given the extra burden of serving as educators while they are in the midst of a crisis. And so um, I wanna try to take some of that away from you. And also I'll give you a, um, I'll give you a link at the end because there are professional people that talk about, like the, the organization that I'm a consultant for, we do individual coaching. So you may need to just go to an organization and get an hour or two of individual coaching to process some things. Um, but I would not recommend that you go to your friends of color to um, ask them to educate you on what's going on. So I want you to be proactive um, and educate yourself. There are so many movies um, out there that you can watch, documentaries that you can watch um, that are either free or come with a subscription. So um, PBS is a great resource. They have all kinds of things that you can search by keyword and you can just, you can literally watch stuff for free on their website. Um, on Netflix, there are a couple of really, really good documentaries. Um, Ava DuVernay has two documentaries, 13th and um, the docu-series When They See Us. I know Warner Brothers just, um, I'm pretty sure it's Warner Brothers. They just, um, the new movie that they have out um, with Jamie Foxx and Michael B. Jordan, let me think of it, um, Just Mercy. I know that they decided to take the um, fee away from that so people could actually watch and learn from it. Additionally, a lot of movies that are out that deal specifically with systematic racism, you can Google um, educational documents to go with them. So more often than not, a professor from somewhere has used that in their class. You can just Google um, study guide for this or additional recommendations and you'll come up with I mean, we know Google. They come up with a lot of stuff. Listen to podcasts. Um, there are a lot of podcasts that are amazing. Um, again, shameless plug for my husband's podcast. It's the Paul Spradley Show. Um, one of the things that he does because he comes from a care-based approach is he has a lot of people on the show that are really jumping into the work at so many different levels, right? There are people that have been on the show that are civil rights leaders. There are people that have been on the show that are just moms that 
were walking down the street. Like there's a mom that um, her son goes to school with my daughter um, there in pre-K. Um, she's a white, middle-aged, middle-class woman, and she had on a Black Lives Matter shirt. And he asked her, hey, what does your shirt mean? And she was like, she just, they just started talking. And he was like, oh, would you like to be on my podcast? Because I feel like there may be some other people who are thinking kind of how you were thinking before you bought that shirt. And she was like, absolutely. Her interview is on the podcast, right? So it's not just this idea of listening to things just to get knowledge of what's going on systemically. You can find a lot of resources to help you understand what individual people are doing to make a difference. Um, reading things too. There are so many. I, 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 this is not a knock towards um, news media at all. So please don't take it as that. However, there are a lot of other things that are out there outside of media resources that you can read, that you can get knowledge on. Um, there are lots of um, people who do writing for independent papers. Um, Huffington Post has lots of stuff. Um, if, you just, if you just Google articles about whatever, like if you Google articles about race, um, a lot of things will come up and you can read them. Um, there's a really good book called The Other Wes Moore, um, and it's written by Wes Moore, but it kind of details the, um, it details the, the life and social and cultural experiences of two Black men who had significantly different sets of opportunities. Um, and so a lot of times when you're reading something, you kind of can engage with um, what other people are going through on a personal level, how they've dealt with it, and just get a deeper understanding. Um, the third one is donate. And a lot of times when people think about donate, they think about, um, oh, you're welcome. A lot of times I'm responding to people that are commenting on Facebook Live too. So <laughs> if you're like, why is she saying that? It, that's why. <laughs> um, so um, a lot of times when people think about donating, they think about just money. But donating isn't just your money. It's your time, your talents, and your treasure. I know, um, out, for example, um, there were quite a few of my friends who um, decided to go down to the protests that were happening in Pittsburgh, and they weren't marching. They literally bought two cases of water just to hand out to peaceful protesters who wanted to, um, who wanted, who were thirsty. Some people bought granola bars, some people bought oranges, right? Like that was something that um, they could do, and they donated their time right? You could donate your talents. I have a friend who was like, I can't be at protests um, because I have asthma. And if we get tear gas, then like I could go into an asthma attack and it's, it's deadly for me. However, I can design a t-shirt design for people to wear, right? So you can donate your time, your talents, or your treasure. Um, and then act you have to act, you have to do something. It doesn't matter if that something is little, that something is big, but you just have to do something. Um, and in conclusion, here's the thing, we all have to take a breath, right? Take a deep breath and then release it and check in with yourself. What's going on with you? How are the people in your life doing? right? Like, like for real, how are you doing? Not just that, oh, I'm good. Like that deep introspective, like, how are you doing? There were some nights last week where I was incredibly sad. Like I was grieving hard. And I just asked my, um, I just asked my husband, I was like, I just need you to sit here with me and I want to cry. That's it. And so you really have to understand what you need and practice some self-care because in order to be the best people for other people, you've got to be the best person yourself. So if you take nothing else away from this, understand that you need to talk to the people in your circle, your friends, your family, your kiddos, and you need to make sure you're practicing self-care. So when it's time for you to act, you have the wherewithal to do so. So I'm gonna open it up really quickly for questions. Um, I have a 
on the Zoom call, there's a, an email address. For those that are on Facebook, it's info at carebaseleadership.org. If you're interested in um, personal um, coaching, you want to do an hour of personal coaching um, with one of the consultants, please send an email there. If you want to schedule um, any sort of business training or professional development, please go ahead and do that. Um, and last but not least, if you want to get on a phone, a Zoom call on Friday talking about specifically how to talk about race and what's going on in the world with our kiddos, um, make sure you send me a message. So I'll open it up for questions. Um, let me stop sharing my screen. Okay, um, so one of the questions was, um, do you talk to churches about how to have these conversations in the body of Christ? Absolutely. So one of the things that um, we've done is we have actually talked with um, ministerial alliances and a lot of people who um, have churches who are going, who are starting to get diverse groups um, in their churches on both sides, right? Because sometimes with gentrification, there are churches that have been traditionally all black and now they have more diversity coming through their doors and they need to understand how to do that. So we absolutely um, talk to churches about how to, how to not just um, create a welcoming environment, but how to have these conversations in their church. What other questions? Let me go to the chat. Okay. Do, do, do. And guys, do not be afraid. She's very much like me. She is an <laughs> open book. Do not be afraid that you're going to say something wrong. Like this is the time to like get those questions answered that you've had going in your head that might come out wrong or whatever. Like she's here to help us right now. So don't, don't hold back. Yeah, feel free to ask. And um, also, you can type the question if you're like, I don't want people to know. Um, type the question and I will um, read it for you. Do I have recommendations on where to donate? Uh, absolutely. Hold on one second. Let me pull up a list. <laughs> um, so there are quite a few organizations that you can research to donate to. I would suggest. Um, there's a George Floyd Memorial Fund. Um, there's a Minnesota Freedom Fund. Um, Colin Kaepernick has the Know Your Rights campaign. They actually just started um, a, they just started a fund to provide um, legal counsel for anyone who is in a protest and gets arrested. Um, so those are probably my top four. Um, I think that there's a lot of other um, entity. I mean, there's always the traditional ones like the NAACP. Um, I always throw in the UNCF, the United Negro College Fund, because I love people to go to college because I'm a professor. Uh, <laughs> um, but I would say that I think that um, I think that yeah, those are the those are my top ones. Um, I. You can um, find my page on Instagram. I think that I put some in the stories. There's probably like 15 um, other organizations that I was highlighting. So yeah, that's a, a place to start. Um, uh, there's another question. Do you offer coaches for anti-racism training? Yes. So it's called anti, yeah. So here's the thing. A lot of people are like, I don't wanna be a racist, right? And a lot of people don't want to be a racist, but a lot of people don't know how to navigate their privilege. And so absolutely, we do offer a lot of corporate training on how to do that um, and navigating in those spaces. We've also done a lot of um, coaching in terms of people that are in those spaces on both sides, because there are some people who are like, I want to stop this and I don't know how. And there are some people that are saying, I'm experiencing this and I don't know how to deal with it. Um, so on both sides, we do offer um, anti, we, we like to call it anti-bias training because then it's inclusive of all biases that people can experience um, and it's a more inclusive training. So we do absolutely um, offer that. Um, Danielle, shoot me an email or a private message and I can give you more info. 
I just wanted to read from up above. There was another question um, from Rachel that said, do you think putting the words right in a post, like quotations, please tell me if I'm wrong with these words is okay? Uh, so here's the thing, and I laugh a lot. So I'm not laughing like at you or at your question or anything, but laughing is my defense mechanism. So I always try to explain that. Um, so do uh, putting, please tell me if I'm wrong with these words. I, I can tell you what I would personally do. Um, I wouldn't put that because they're your words, right? Like they're not wrong because they're your words. It, unless it's harmful or offensive or hurtful, um, then I think that it would be okay, right? And I'm saying that because if you're being genuine and if you're being authentic, then it's going to be an overflow of your heart. And so you don't have to there's not this sense that you have to get approval um, from people. It's a sense that you should wanna be in solidarity with people, right? So one of the things that, um, one of the things that a friend of mine posted said, I don't know what to say. I just know that I love my friends and I'm here with you. And I was like, I appreciate that right? She didn't know what to say. She didn't know the right thing to say. She was just like, I'm sitting in this with you. And I'm trying to figure out what's right and what's wrong. And that's where I am right now. The I thing that, that response, Jessica, thank you. Oh, no problem. Because <laughs> go ahead. I think, no, I just want to say like, your words are very powerful tonight. And I really appreciate you taking the time to educate all of us. And, um, you know, I think a lot of the people on this call who are of my color are f and and feeling in a space of all love is the way I would put it is are just feeling caught up here yeah you know and and that's not what we need right now that's like the last thing we need right now is for everyone to be caught up here we need people to just let it out and I think I I just want to I just want to say loud and clear, like, I really appreciate you coming on here. I really appreciate you responding to my question too, because yeah, I want to, I want to not feel like that. I want to just, yeah. So thank you. Oh yeah, no problem. And I'm sorry I didn't see it. I was trying to scroll up and down. So thanks for um, pointing it out. And I have a question. Sorry, go sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that um, we all want to speak our feelings on somewhere in this movement, there came a really hard line between Black Lives Matter and anti-police and trying to blend that line a little bit for some of us where we have best friends who are wives of police officers who are maybe taking it the wrong way perhaps. And I shouldn't say the wrong way because they're allowed to feel what they're feeling and, and there's a lot of danger and hate and all of that going on for the police officers right now. Um, and so trying to speak to supporting the Black Lives Matter movement and speaking for supporting our law enforcement officers, the good, the good eggs, you know, um, trying to trying to merge those two worlds, because to me, in my faith, in my social media, it's like a major divide right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that makes sense. And um, I feel like these questions are probably sparking. I need to just do a training, <laughs> a full training on this. So I'm probably going to work on it over the weekend. And um, I will uh, message me if you're interested in the full training. Um, I'll probably, I'll be honest, I'll probably charge for it like seven or $10. Um, but it'll probably be a full 90 minute training. Um, and I, I'll probably do it next, I'll do it next week, but message me if you're interested. And here's what I'll say to that. One of the things that has to happen is people genuinely have to educate themselves on both movements. I get it. I have friends, I, we have friends that are police officers. Like I have, our, my, uh, so many of my uncles are in the military. So when we say something like, you know, like there's a lot of things that, um, that you have to, um, consider, but 
what people don't understand if they're just paying attention to the media or just what somebody else tells them is that Black Lives Matter is not anti-police. You can be pro-police and pro-justice and pro-Black Lives Matter, right? Black Lives Matter does not mean that everybody else's life doesn't matter. Everybody who is for Black Lives Matter believes that all lives matter, but all lives can't matter if Black lives don't matter, right? And so when we think about it, this is not a way to separate people, right? It's a way to say, hey, there is some humanity that is being stripped away from a group of people in our society. And because I am a human and I love people, I don't think they should be treated this way. That has nothing to do with being for or anti-belief. I mean, for or anti-police, but it has everything to do with loving people. And it's, you know, if I can add to, it's not a black versus blue, right? Mm -hmm. Because we all know there are bad people in every circle. Mm -hmm. But what the problem is, is the justice behind it right so and then like my husband was just saying if if you guys don't know me uh, my husband is white <laughs> i know there are some people who i haven't seen on here before but um he was saying to me that um after your comment rachel he goes yeah i agree with her and i think part of it he goes i'm embarrassed i'm embarrassed to be white right now i'm embarrassed to be married to a powerful black woman and my race is going around <laughs> being ridiculous. Like, this is not the country, and I think this is what it boils down to, this is not the country that we wanna raise our kids in. This is not what we want their futures to look like. And it's up to us right now to start that process again and again and again to make it different for them. Because I don't know if anyone else saw the Today Show this morning, but there was a little blip on there this morning with Al Roker and another commenter, and I can't remember which one was trying to kill me, but they were saying about, and I was talking to Jess about this earlier, and it really opened my eyes to where they grew up with MLK, right? They grew up during those protests, and for their generation, it's eye-opening. Like, all of this is exciting. I mean, not that someone is dying, not that there are riots, not that there's looting, but the fact that in these protests, you guys, there is hope. Why? Because as opposed to back then, right now, you are seeing a rainbow of color in these protests. It is not just Black people in these protests. It's white, it's Hispanic, it's Asian, it's gay, it's straight, it's everyone coming together. So the fact that we've progressed this far, like I hope is that light, gives you a little bit of a light inside of you to know that, yeah, this is horrible. This is so bad, but this is also so necessary. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Um, business as usual and still showing up for the movement. <laughs> Finding balance. Um, so Mary Page, that's, I feel like that's a great question. So Mary Page asked the question, um, should we just go on with business as usual or is there a balance? Uh, so here's the thing, it, it depends on who your clientele is, right? Like I know people who are in the, um, people who are in the, what is it when you do yards? What kind of business is, why am I forgetting that? Landscaping. landscaping. Yes, thank you. <laughs> people who are in landscaping business who as soon as we went, like got out of the red and we went to yellow and they could go back to work, business was booming. And business is still booming, right? And I know people who are in counseling services and their business is booming for a completely different reason, right? And I know people who are in MLMs that um, are where they're selling things like um, jewelry or Norwex who are taking breaks because they just don't feel right having online parties to buy those things in a time like this. So it's again, you have to be introspective and understand where you are, where your clientele is. And if it's just business as usual, then it's just business as usual. But if it's not appropriate, then it's not appropriate. 
that I think that's a that's more of a personal um, decision. Um, yeah, so one of the people on Facebook said, um, we can't, when raising the next generation, we can't, we can never go back to business as usual. So I think the thought, like the thought behind that is our world is changing, right? Our world is changing. We've been sidelined by coronavirus. We've been sidelined by violence. And so we really, really just need to take stock on where we are now and figure out what's next. And it's gonna look different for everybody. I have kind of a strange, I don't know. Hi, I'm Heidi. Hi, Hi Heidi. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us um, during this really tragic time. No problem. Um, I've been doing my own grieving and I know that I'm sure that, you know, I guess for me, it's strange because I was, I, I was raised in, in New England at a time when I really legitimately as a white person in New England thought that racism was over, which is ridiculous. I know, but I thought that's, you know, people in the South and that's in like 1800 something. And, you know, maybe 19, you know, maybe when my dad was younger and I feel so like, I feel like a dope <laughs> because I, you know, my first boyfriend was black. We never talked about that. We were taught to not really see color or that's like sort of how I was raised, which now I'm reading and learning and realizing how wrong all of that is. Um, you know, I'm really, you know, glad to be learning and I just really appreciate it. Like, I don't feel like it's my place to make people teach me or anything like that by any means. Um, but I just want to say thank you for, you know, shedding light. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to, to I, I want to raise my kids in a way where we're taught to celebrate each other's diversity, but also not be so awkward. Like, I guess it, it, I just feel like it's so awkward sometimes, like, cause you don't want to walk into a room and be like, oh, hey, you're different than me. But you, you also don't want to like not acknowledge it at all either. And it's, I don't know. It's a strange space to be in. It is. It is a strange space to be in. And I'm going to recommend like you read things that have to do with colorblind theory. Um, because a lot of people will say, well, I don't see color. And so here's what I say to that. Um, people will say, I don't see color. And I'll say, well, do you drive? They're like, yeah. I'm like, well, how do you stop? And they're like, what do you mean? If you don't see color, then you can't see the stop sign. So like how do you know when to stop or when to slow down or when to go and they're like oh that's green and i'm like what's the difference between green and brown you know <laughs> like you you see color you're just opting out of seeing color right and i and and i think that that's where we have definitely gone wrong as a society because we've attached this negative stigma onto being of color we've attached this negative stigma of being of color right i am not ashamed of being black i love being black i love that my girls have beautiful black skin i love my kinky hair i love my culture i love the seasonings that we put on food and i can talk for hours about the stuff that i love about being black being <laughs> one of my friends posted she was like being black is not exhausting the way that the world treats black people is exhausting right yeah. and so that's what that's what we teach our kiddos right I, my, <laughs> today, um, I bought some, I bought some beef ribs at the store and my husband was like, can you put them in the crock pot for me? And that's my husband voice. He always laughs. He's like, is that really how I talk? I'm like, yeah, you really talk like this. <laughs> and so he was like, um, he was like, um, what? Oh, I was getting the seasonings out, right? And my daughter was like, what's that? And she's four. And he was like, that's the stuff we put on our food to make it delicious. And she said, delicious? It's going to be delicious. <laughs> and I said, yeah, girl, you want to put it on, right? And so, like, I celebrate stuff. I have, so I always talk with um, some of my friends. I have Goya seasonings. I always have three Goya seasonings, three types on deck at all times because I love the way they taste. I grew up around a whole bunch of Puerto Rican and Mexican people, and I'm, I'm influenced by that kind of cooking. It's not my culture, 
um, and I'm not going to appropriate it. So I tell my kids, like, this is traditional seasonings that Mexican people use. It gives it this kind of taste and X, Y, Z. So I expose them to little things, right? We make it normal. It's, it's normal for people to be Mexican and have seasonings. It's normal for people to be Black and be beautiful and be amazing. And it's normal for people to be white and be beautiful and amazing, right? The thing that's happening in our country right now is we've stripped that away from people of color. We've assigned this negative thing, but we can't take it off. Like, I can't walk into a store and just pretend that I'm not Black. It doesn't happen. So this thing that's going on in society, it sees me based on my skin color, right? It's not, it's not an option for me. I don't want it to be an option. I'm, I'm glad, I am proud that I have the skin that I'm in and I do the things that I do, right? Um, but we have to acknowledge that it's not the same for everybody, right? We have to acknowledge that there are some things that are going on in our world that are not right, and we just have to do our part to fix them. So I know that there are lots of you on the call. There are lots of people on Zoom. If you want, if you need another training, please feel free to shoot me a private message on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I'm going to, um, I'll, I'll map out a what's next training for next week. Um, and so I will be publicizing that on my Instagram and on my Facebook. Thank you so much, Jess. No um, I came up with a little something. <laughs> I was on the phone with Dana this afternoon, like a couple hours before this call with my husband and he brought to light, um, just cause I know this is a very heavy topic and it's late and we're going to bed and I wanted to just shed a little bit more hope. Um, your way. So I came up with a couple slides. It's influenced by Stephen Colbert. Um, <laughs> but just to, I know a lot of us have been watching the news and um, they're oh, showing Facebook everything. Live. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and that goes the same for you. If you're interested in um, they are uh, mom training that I'm going to do this Friday, um, how to talk about yes. race and racism with your yes. kiddos, make sure you send me a message. Um, yes. And I'm going to be developing this what's next. Um, I'm going to be developing this what's next training for next week. So shoot me a message. Bye. Okay. Sorry. So, I'm so, so you are so you're fine. Like, I was like, I'm a I was, I was closing saying. out the Facebook live. You're like, <laughs> they're done now. <laughs> um, <that>? but, okay. <laughs> no, you're good. I created these little slides because um, so often when we watch the news, it's all completely negative. And I want you to know all of my lovely coaches on here that um, there is change happening right? And there's change happening on actually both sides, on the African-American side and our side. And I just wanted, hopefully this will work, to share this with you. So sorry if you see a whole bunch of stuff that pops up on my screen. If you guys need Jess's email address or if you need any of her social handles, um, you guys, for the majority, all know me. So go ahead and DM me or text me if you have my number. But real quick, I just wanted to share this because it was nice. Um, hopefully this will work. I threw them in the comments too. Bonus. Okay. So this is just a moment of hope. Images not shown often on the news that's happening right now because of this movement. Okay. Okay. Two days ago in Queens, New York, police knelt with protesters. This is not a black and blue matter. In Flint, Michigan, I'm sure you have all heard this one, the sheriff joined in on the march and all the protesters chanted, march with us, march with us, and they all marched with them. Protesters protected a target from being looted in Queens, New York. In Kentucky, a group of white women protected black protesters from police. In Louisville, protesters created a human barrier to protect a cop who got separated from his unit. Let's just let that one stick. This proves the point that it's not a black and blue issue. In Minneapolis, Mennonites were supporting the protests. 
And a quote from Stephen Colbert, let me just minimize this over here so I can read it. 58 years ago, John F. Kennedy said, those who will make peaceful re revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. Not only addressing systemic and racial injustice is the right thing to do, it is the safest, most conservative, most self-protecting, most self-serving thing to do. So it's time to ask ourselves, it's always time to ask ourselves, what kind of nation do we wanna live in? And I'm going to tell you guys tonight, let your voice be heard. That's it. Just gonna do one of those. <laughs> okay. And thank you guys so much for having on. Um, Dana, I don't know if we wanna close this out with any. Um... <laughs> I was gonna do our typical team call stuff at the end, but I think we'll skip it tonight and just leave this as it was. Jessica, thank you so very much for your time and everything you shared with us tonight. It was so helpful and informative. Oh, and I really you. hope that um, this is the beginning of many many honest, open conversations that we have um, to really learn and listen and be an ally so we can create real change moving forward. So thank you, Jessica, again. And no we'll problem. see everybody hey, next Dana, week. Dana, can you send me a copy of the recording? The link yes, the absolutely. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Ashley.